Now that the PlayStation VR 2 is out and reaching thousands of homes around the world, it's important that everybody knows how to get the best possible experience while in their headset. Anything from potential blur or cleaning the headset properly, and even fixing a few settings to get even more of an immersive experience is very important. So let's dive right in. One of the most delicate parts of any VR headset is the lenses, and using the correct type of lens cleaner is very important. The lens cleaner you see here on screen, I will leave a link to below, works great with any type of VR lenses. Having dirty lenses can really hurt the overall immersion in VR and some people make the mistake of using a paper towel or even just a normal towel. You must use something soft and made for lens cleaning or else you will scratch your lenses. This can lead to irreversible damage and potentially a lot of lost money in your pocket. After the headset is cleaned from any potential markings, it's important that you move the headset around your head to make sure it fits properly. A lot of people have been experiencing some types of blur and it can be a simple fix by making sure you're calibrating your IPD correctly. As you can see on the screen here, I made sure I took many minutes to make sure that that I could calibrate my IPD correctly to make sure I didn't have to experience any potential blur. Once you have found the sweet spot for your headset and you find yourself potentially seeing blur again, you can always go back into the settings and adjust this IPD calibration at any point in time as you wish. Once the lenses are cleaned, there are vents on the front of the VR headset that over time will start to collect dust. That's why it's important to use some type of duster in order to get unwanted dust out of whatever electronic that you're using. In this case, we are using the Surf On duster that I use for both my PlayStation 5, PC, and now my PlayStation VR 2. And with any cleaning material in this video, I'll be making sure I leave a link below so you can get your own as well. Once you've been playing on the headset for a while, you might notice your face shield starting to get a little bit dirty over time. Taking off the face shield is actually very simple. Make sure you gently pinch each individual corner and don't stretch it or else you could damage your face shield altogether. Once you've completely removed the face shield, you can simply use water and a nice soft towel to dry it. Once your face shield is dry, make sure you pinch each individual corner slot back in one by one in order to make sure your face shield fits properly once you put back on the headset. We're going to take off the straps on the PlayStation VR 2 Sense controllers. As you can see from the one in my hand here, there is no strap and I feel very confident that the controller will not slip out based off the design and the circle already around my hand. While with the other controller, I can put the strap on but it almost feels like too much for me. So what you're going to do is locate the strap and where it's attached to the controller and twist either to the left or the right depending on what controller you have. And as you can see, it pops right off and if you really wanted to, you can simply put it right back on in case you have company or somebody else that wants to use those controllers or your headset. Now that your controllers are done, you have a couple of audio options. The first option comes with the headset, and that's the earbuds that attach to the back of the PlayStation VR 2. But then you can also use the 3D Pulse headphones that do a great job with capturing really good 3D audio. However, I was quite surprised with the earbuds as they definitely held their own and provided very good audio as well. If you're someone that's on a budget or just don't want to spend $100 on the pulses, then the earbuds will pan out just fine. And simple yet a forgotten part of keeping your headset protected is keeping it away from any cats, kids, or dogs in the area. The wire can come off of the headset, but it does require a lot of work, and unfortunately, there have been no word from Sony yet as far as a replacement goes if you end up breaking your wire. And if you've stayed this far into the video, I'm going to be giving you an extra bonus piece of information as well when it comes to the settings inside the PlayStation VR 2. While in the PlayStation VR 2, you are able to use cinematic mode, but by default, 120Hz is grayed out. A simple fix for this is to tap a video output and head over to 120Hz output option and turn it from automatic to off. This will enable you to switch on 120 hertz for cinematic mode. And a very important setting which will allow you to save the battery life on your controllers is having them turn off after a certain amount of time. It's very simple, you just have to go down into settings, click system, and go down to power saving, and set the time until controllers turn off to whatever your desired time will be. If you found these tips helpful, do consider hitting that subscribe button and joining the future of VR right here on this channel. And for all those that have continued to show support, you guys all know I love you so much. I'm VR, and I will catch you in the next video.